Well, there's another super tall building on Earth. Uh, the Japanese just announced this week the completion of the Tokyo Sky Tree. It's a broadcast tower, so it's not populated all the way up, but it's uh, 2,080 feet high, which makes it um, not the tallest building in the world. Uh, that's still the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, 2,700 feet, almost half a mile. And I, I kind of love these buildings. I, I'm not always sure why we build them. You know, obviously they have functions like broadcasting digital TV or being a place for a hotel and an office building or being a somewhat phallic display of a country's architectural and financial prowess, I suppose. But I think there's something more going on with skyscrapers. I really, I really quite love them. And uh, some of that, I think, is because they give us uh, access to um, a different world. I'll tell you what I mean. When I lived in Tokyo, when I was in college, uh, they just completed the Tokyo City Hall. It's kind of this double-barreled uh, postmodern thing. And the observation deck, I know, talking about observation decks on a show called Observation Deck is a little on the nose. Sorry, I'll get past it. Going up to the observation deck cost some money. I was a poor student, didn't have it. So I used to go up in the skyscraper next door so I could see Tokyo, so I could be in a place where I could get an angle on a city that didn't exist anywhere else, a built space that I could see these other built spaces. I did the same thing in any other city I would go to, Chicago, and LA if I could, and New York especially. New York, I ate at Windows on the World a couple of times, the restaurant that used to be at the top of the World Trade Center, and uh, once when I was 18 for my birthday, and then again when I was there when I was an adult, and I'd mistimed that dinner. I, I scheduled it on a day that turned out to be overcast, so there was no view of the city. In fact, the towers were the only things you could see sticking up above the cloud layer. And there was something special about being in, uh, in a built bubble where the only structure, where the only city really was the place that we were sitting and eating. And of course, those aren't there anymore. The towers are gone. And you can actually go to that place and look up and see a point in space that used to be enclosed but isn't. In fact, that's a point in space and a point in time, right? Because it used to be there and isn't there anymore or is something different now. And that got me thinking when I was reading about that Tokyo Tower about an article I read um, a couple of years ago talking about gravitational time dilation, a relativistic effect. Gravity slows time down. The closer you are to the ground, the slower time moves. So for every meter that you move up, a second is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 16th shorter. That's infinitesimal. But if you start to get up into these skyscrapers, it's, well, slightly less infinitesimal. At the top of the Burj Khalifa, it's 9.1 times 10 to the minus 14th. The second is that much shorter. The top of that Tokyo sky tree, it's 5.2 times 10 to the minus 14th. These are super small numbers. I mean, it would take millions of years at the top of one of these buildings for your watch to gain a second on a watch that was on the ground. But there's still something kind of magical about being in a space-time bubble at the top of a building in a place that only exists at a moment in space and time, it is unearthly.